Good evening. Welcome to South Asia Newsline. I am Shreya Savijay. Here are the top stories we are tracking for you on Thursday, the 5th of August. Abrogation of Article 370 brought unprecedented progress, peace in India's Jammu and Kashmir, says PM Modi. Pakistanis rush to get inoculated after government warns of penalties for unvaccinated. And celebrations erupt back home as India wins Olympic hockey medal after 41 years. And now for all the details. On the second anniversary of the revocation of Jammu and Kashmir's special status, Indian Prime Minister Narendra Modi said that abrogation of Article 370 has brought unprecedented peace and progress in the region. Indian government had abrogated Article 370 and bifurcated Jammu and Kashmir into two union territories, Jammu and Kashmir and Ladakh, on August 5, 2019. On the second anniversary of the revocation of Jammu and Kashmir's special status, Indian Prime Minister Narendra Modi, in a series of tweets on Thursday, said that since the abrogation of Article 370 two years ago, there has been unprecedented peace and progress in the region. The Modi government had abrogated Article 370 and bifurcated the erstwhile state into two union territories, Jammu and Kashmir and Ladakh, on August 5, 2019. In Srinagar, the main city of Jammu and Kashmir, troops patrolled the streets where many shops were shut to mark the second anniversary. Troops meant check post in parts of Srinagar, which has been a hotbed of separatist activity, carrying out security checks on people and vehicles, witnesses said. Militants have battled India's rule in Jammu and Kashmir for more than three decades, a revolt it blames Pakistan for having stopped. Islamabad denies this, saying it provides only moral and diplomatic support to the Kashmiri people. Our Jammu Kashmir ki beti ko unka haak nahi milta tha. Atam Kawad ko panpaya ja raha tha is 370 ki madad se. पाकिस्तान में लोगों को जो लोग थे उनको यहां पे जम्मू कश्मीर में बसाया जा रहा था और आज जो एक जम्मू कश्मीर का माहौल है बड़ा एक अच्छा वातावरण है यहां पे हाउएवर पीपल्स डेमोक्रेटिक पार्टी पीडीपी प्रेसिडेंट एंड फॉर्मर स्टेट चीफ महबूबा मुफ्ती कॉल्ड अगस्त 5 अ डे ऑफ मॉर्निंग फॉर द पीपल ऑफ जम्मू एंड कश्मीर आज का दिन जम्मू कश्मीर के लिए मातम का दिन है ये लोग आज जो है मातम मना रहे हैं जो जुल्म सितम और बर्बरियत का दौर शुरू किया 2019 में बीजेपी की सरकार ने उसके लिए यहां के लोग नालान हैं और बड़े अफसोस की बात है पूरे मुल्क के अंदर बीजेपी आज इसकी खुशियां मना रही है जिसका कश्मीरी मातम मना रहा है अ ग्रुपिंग ऑफ पॉलिटिकल पार्टीज इन कश्मीर द पीपल्स अलायंस ऑफ गुपकार डिक्लेरेशन सेड इट वुड कीप अप इट्स स्ट्रगल फॉर रिस्टोरेशन ऑफ पार्शियल ऑटोनॉमी अकॉर्डिंग टू द गवर्नमेंट्स क्लेम Terrorist violence in Jammu and Kashmir has reduced significantly after the abrogation of Article 370. Floods triggered by heavy rainfall have freaked havoc in India's Madhya Pradesh state, affecting more than 1,200 villages and throwing normal life out of care. Chief Minister of the Central State on Thursday visited flood-ravaged areas and assured all possible help. Floods triggered by incessant rainfall have wreaked havoc in India's central Madhya Pradesh state, affecting over 1,200 villages and throwing normal life out of gear. Madhya Pradesh Chief Minister Shivraj Singh Chauhan on Thursday visited flood-ravaged areas in Gwalior district and assured all possible help. Water bodies including major rivers and drains in Madhya Pradesh have swelled to alarming levels after heavy rainfall. At least three deaths have been reported due to the deluge in the state, according to local media reports. Rescue operations have been underway since Monday. Seasonal monsoon rains are crucial for farmers. But excessive rainfalls affect several regions in India, causing problems like floods, landslides and waterborne diseases every year. 
A resolute Indian men's hockey team rewrote history as it claimed an Olympic medal after 41 years, defeating a plucky Germany to win the bronze in an edge-of-the-seat match of the ongoing Games in Tokyo on Thursday. Celebrations erupted back home with family members, friends and fans rejoicing across the country with some tears of joy. Celebrations broke out back home after India won the bronze medal after a thrilling 5-4 victory over Germany at the Tokyo Games on Thursday, giving the country its first Olympic hockey medal in after 41 years. Determined to clinch a medal, the Indian hockey team led by Manpreet Singh made one of the most memorable comebacks in the history of the game, fighting back from a two-goal deficit to turn the match in their favour. Families, friends and fans of the team members rejoiced by dancing, singing and distributing sweets across the country with some tears of joy. Father of goalkeeper P.R. Srijesh, who pulled off stunning save in the final few seconds of the match, said he was proud of his son as he got a medal for the country. I am very proud of my son. Okay, he got one the third medal. I don't mind, but it is his third Olympics. But he has got one medal. I am very, very proud of him. India's Prime Minister Narendra Modi wrote a congratulatory message on Twitter and said, India is proud of its hockey team and the historic day will be etched in the memory of every Indian. Family members of hockey player Gurjant Singh, who was seen holding Indian tricolour flags as they celebrated the glorious victory, expressed the bronze medal win is equivalent to gold as it came back after 40 long years. India's last of the eight Olympic goals came way back in the 1980 Moscow Games. It is India's third hockey bronze medal in the history of the Olympics. The other two came in 1968 Mexico City and the 1972 Munich Games. In news from Pakistan, the government of Pakistan recently warned its citizens of penalizing them if they refused to get COVID-19 jabs, following which long queues and massive crowds formed at vaccination centers in the country this week as people rushed to get inoculated. The government announced that it would block unvaccinated workers from entering public offices, schools and restaurants, while the general public will be banned from transport, shopping malls and air travel without vaccination certificates. Long queues and massive crowds formed at vaccination centers in Pakistan this week. As people rushed to get inoculated after the government warned, it would penalize the unvaccinated. Last week, Pakistan's federal government announced that it would block unvaccinated workers from entering public offices, schools and restaurants, while the general public will be banned from transport, shopping malls and air travel without vaccination certificates. The provincial government in Sindh has put extra pressure on people to get vaccinated, warning that it could withhold the salaries of government servants and block people's cell phone SIM cards unless they had the required certificates. I am personally not government of Sindh vaccine SIM Health workers said crowds were surging mainly because people were afraid of these new restrictions kicking in on August 30 rather than for any health concerns and many of those queuing agreed. Out of a population of 220 million, more than 31 million have received one vaccine shot but only 6.7 million have been fully vaccinated, according to the National Command and Operations Center, NCOC. The country has seen soaring coronavirus infections fueled by the highly transmissible Delta variant, putting its poor health infrastructure under extreme pressure. Pakistan has so far reported 1.05 million cases of coronavirus. Moving on. 
Candidate of Pakistan Prime Minister Imran Khan's ruling PTI party, Abdul Qayyum Niasi, was sworn in as the new Prime Minister of the legally occupied territory of Pakistan administered Kashmir on Wednesday. Niazi secured the premiership by bagging 33 votes in the Legislative Assembly, while opposition PPP and PMLN party's joint candidate, Chaudhry Latif Akbar, managed to win only 15 votes. This came as protests have continued across the region over alleged rigging in July 25th Assembly poll, the results of which declared PTI as victorious. India, which claims the region as its territory, had also rejected the move to hold elections in Pakistan-administered Kashmir and said the cosmetic exercise was nothing but an attempt by Pakistan to camouflage its illegal occupation. The Afghan forces have thwarted the Taliban's attack on India-built Salma Dam in Herat province, said the Afghan government on Wednesday, adding that the terror group has suffered heavy casualties and fled the area as a result of counter-attacks. The dam has been India's most expensive infrastructural project in Afghanistan in recent years and was jointly inaugurated by Indian Prime Minister Narendra Modi and Afghan President Ashraf Ghani in 2016. Afghan Defense Ministry spokesperson Fawad Daman in a tweet on Wednesday said the Afghan forces thwarted the Taliban's attack on India-built Salma Dam in Herat province, adding that the terror group has suffered heavy casualties and fled the area as a result of counter-attacks. The Salma Dam, also known as the Afghan-India Friendship Dam, is one of the most significant infrastructure projects undertaken by Indian government in Afghanistan as part of its 3 billion reconstruction efforts. The dam was inaugurated by Indian Prime Minister Narendra Modi and Afghan President Ashraf Ghani in June 2016. The attack comes at a time when violence has escalated as Taliban has intensified its attacks on civilians and Afghan forces. Meanwhile, the United Nations said on Wednesday it is deeply concerned about the safety and protection of tens of thousands of people in Afghanistan's Lashkar Gah who could be trapped by heavy fighting between Afghan government forces and the Taliban. They were deeply concerned about the safety and protection of people in Lashkar Gah in the south where tens of thousands of people could be trapped by the fighting. Our humanitarian colleagues also tell us that in Helmand and Kandahar, there are reported increased civilian casualties, destruction or damage to civilian houses, as well as to critical infrastructure, including hospitals. Uh, hospitals and health workers are becoming o overwhelmed by the number of wounded people. The Taliban have stepped up their campaign to defeat the U.S.-backed government since April, as foreign forces complete their withdrawal after 20 years of war. Fighting has been particularly heavy around the city of Herat, near the western border with Iran, and Lashkar Gah and Kandahar in the south. With Indians battling to contain the deadly coronavirus, a women's self-help group in southern Kerala state has come to the fore and has been producing 10,000 masks daily to keep the virus at bay. Members of the group say they are happy to be part of the COVID prevention mission. Women associated with the regional self-help group Subiksha in India's southern Kerala state have been producing 10,000 masks daily to help the citizens keep the virus at bay. Subiksha was established for creating employment opportunities for women through Kudumba Sri units, the state government's initiative to eradicate poverty. The group now has 588 units providing employment to women. Members at one of the units expressed they were happy that they are now part of COVID prevention mission. While daily infections reported in India have declined in recent weeks, Kerala has been witnessing a rapid surge in COVID-19 cases, which has become a matter of concern. Despite new restrictions, Daily cases surged to 22,414 in Kerala on Wednesday, the highest single-day count recorded by any state in the past two months. Well, that's all we have for you from South Asia this evening. Now, viewers can watch the show on SouthAsianewsline.com. You can also visit us on Facebook.com slash and follow us on Twitter at SAsianewsline. That's all in tonight's edition. 
We'll see you same time tomorrow. Good night.